Welcome back. Now, uh, this video is just going to continue where we left off in uh, the basic sketching. And we're going to cover um, sketch fillet, trim, extend, offset, and project. Uh, like I said, these are very niche tools uh, with, uh, with very situational applications, but I figured uh, since uh, we're covering everything, we might as well do a video on these in case you find it useful. So here we go. Uh, like solids, sketches can also be filleted. Uh, you can always just fillet them after you extrude them, but this function's here for you if you if you want it uh, beforehand. Um, let's say uh, put down a rectangle, and then we go over here to sketch fillet, and we gotta find a corner. Oh, we gotta first let it know we're editing this sketch, and then when we get close to a corner, we get this red uh, line that becomes the uh, the curve, and we can come here and. Make it shallow, make it deep. Now, if you uh, if you cross too deep, it's just going to extend your sketch um, outward like that, uh, which is a little bit of a weird effect because I don't think those points even end up filling in. Oh no, actually they do. Uh, so you can create some strange effects that way with sketch fillet. Um, I'm not a tremendous fan of it. I prefer to just fill it after I've already extruded, but you may find some use for it. Uh, next tool that's available is the trim tool, which is basically a way to delete uh, line segments from your sketches. You hit trim, you select your sketch, and now you are able to just chop that right off. Now that won't work as well with splines. Splines are basically considered, considered one continuous line segment, so unless you want to trim away a spline from a, uh, an object that contains a spline but is not just one big curve, trim won't be very useful uh, with, uh, with curved objects. Uh, next tool that we have is the extend tool. Now the extend tool is uh, actually pretty handy, but it's a little bit weird in how it works. And let me just show you an example. Um, let's do this right here. If we try to extend one of these lines, we're not even going to be able to get the option. You know, this I'm clicking and nothing's happening. Now let me just adjust the angle of this a tiny bit. Actually, I won't be able to do that from here. I have to add part of this. And instead of making it parallel with this line over here, let me give it even just the slightest angle. When I go back and extend one of these lines, notice that red line that now pops up there? And that's letting me know how far that uh, curve or that line segment is going to extend when I click it. And it went all the way actually out in no man's land. So let's make this angle a little bit more extreme. Now let's go back and extend. Now you see, the extend travels much less distance uh, this time around. And if I extend this one, you'll see it encloses the shape. So what I've just illustrated here is the idea that extend knows how far to extend the line because it is referencing the next line within that same sketch that would hypothetically intersect it if it were also to be extended. Um, when it when, when you know when we extend this line over here that hypotenuse of that of, of the of the triangle now, why doesn't it stop over here? Or why doesn't it keep going way out here? Because it knows that, hypothetically, if we were also to extend this line, they would both meet at this point right here. And that's why extend didn't work at all when we had perfectly parallel line segments, because those lines were never going to intersect, so it didn't know how far to keep them going. Um, so you might wonder about the purpose of this um, and, and what it really enables. Um, and, and what I found was uh, there's a really neat thing you can do, at least with pentagons, but other polygons as well, where if you're trying to figure out how to draw a star in 1, 2, 3D, and you don't want to do a whole bunch of geometry, start with a pentagon and hit extend and just extend each of these sides. Because notice this side's only going to extend over to here, which is as far as this one would extend. And just keep extending them like that. 
and you can see that you know for for drawing uh, shapes with a little bit of geometry to them um, Extend can actually be very useful. Now, uh, one thing uh, to keep in mind, let's go back to extrusion a little bit, is that uh, when you have enclosed polygons within sketches, they're going to extrude on their own. If you wanted to create a full star out of this, you'd have to control select all five sketches and extrude them all at the same time. Or, if you don't want these divisions in the middle anymore, and you can just hit trim, and take those out. And now you've got the outline. Oops. And we can extrude it that way. Another uh, aspect of extrude that we haven't covered is, and this is weird, because you can only see it when you extrude kind of coming at it from the left or right. Um, and uh, where's my construct? Here we go. Extrude. Now notice this time around, when we, we extruded this way, it was, there was something over here that was kind of barely visible. But when we turn our view this way, we see this little dial. And what this dial does is actually pretty neat. Uh, when we grab it and turn it, it changes the angle of the extrusion. You can expand it outwards or have it converge inwards. Um, so if you wanted to create, let's say, a, a pyramid, uh, now these pyramid primitives were just added in in the recent, um, which we call it, in the recent update. Uh, but if we wanted, um, you know, to, to have drawn a pyramid beforehand, we had to use a rectangle and extrude it like this, give it an angle converging inward, and then create the pyramid. So that's another use of extrude that you might find handy. Uh, let's continue on with this star here. Let's say that we wanted to, uh, instead of make this a, a, a solid extrusion, we wanted to make it maybe like a cookie cutter or something like that. Uh, over here, we have a tool called Offset, where what it does to a sketch is you click it, you select the outline, and then you move your mouse away, and it's going to create another sketch, uh, or basically a continuation of this sketch, uh, by giving a buffer kind of wall around the original outline, and the and the uh, the thickness of which you can define in that number box right there. So if I know that I want uh, a cookie cutter that's say uh, three millimeters of thickness, I can put three in here, and then I can either trim away the center segment, or I can just kind of click this spot over here and extrude this like that. So that is offset. The last tool I want to show you, it's a little bit of a niche use, um, is project. And what project does is it creates a sketch based on one of the faces of your solids. Now, uh, let's start by smart scaling this to illustrate one of the concepts of project, which is that the first thing you need to select when you project is a projection surface, uh, which can be the grid, or it can be another solid, or it can be the very same surface you're projecting, and I'll, I'll illustrate each of those. Project is found under the sketch menu all the way at the right here. And the first thing it wants you to do is select a sketch plane or click to define the plane. Let's say we're defining the plane as this work grid right here. Now it wants us to select a face to project. Notice where the shadow is right here. That's where I'm going to be projecting to. If I click this, it's basically like imagine a light source coming in from the top and doing almost like a little uh, silhouette of this face against the surface that we chose as our projection surface. Meaning that um, if I project a surface that's at an angle like this, you're not going to get the full thickness of it. It's going to act as if the light is coming basically perpendicular to the projection surface like that and only showing if we go into orthographic view and hit look at it from the top. You can see how the projection actually worked out. All right, so let's try instead projecting a uh, sketch onto another surface. We can choose the top of this box as the projection surface, and we can choose this as 
the uh, shape that we're projecting. And that allows us to, again, kind of create a silhouette of that sketch on a different surface. Or, you know, sometimes all you need is you look at this and you say, gosh, I just wish I could have a sketch right on, on the top of where this is right here. And you can do that by hitting project, selecting the very face that you're going to project as the surface. Basically, you just double click, click and click. And there we go. And when you slide this away, you see that the projection is left there. 